Hi there, today we're going to be looking at fixings um, into plasterboard. Um, we've got a wall here, plasterboard wall, and we need to know particularly which type of fixing we can buy from a shop for that particular wall. Two questions that you need to ask. Firstly, how big is the cavity behind that wall? And how is the wall being built if there is a cavity? I've got a selection of breeze blocks here, um, metal stud wall, timber stud wall, battened out, block wall, and we've got a dot and dab wall. This selection of fixings, um, similar sort of types, the, the folding toddle bolts, which you'll all be familiar with. Um, this is a snap toddle that's uh, become quite popular in the marketplace at the moment. Um, you'll all be familiar with Grip It, that's a 25mm fixing, and the 20mm. I'm left with a couple of fixings that can compete. Um, we've got um, Grip It fixing, this is 25mm. Uh, this has wings that open outwards at the back, as you can see, and it's a 25mm hole. The downside to this, you need an excessively large screwdriver, um, at least 10 mil across, to turn the wings outwards. You cannot guarantee that those wings have opened. And in some cases, the cams that drive these little wings do snap, so they don't open. And the other weakness of these is that is an 8 mil diameter bolt. Most brackets, uh, radiator brackets, um, are usually around a quarter inch, 6.5 mil. So it's massively oversized as a fixing. Um, they do do a range of different fixings. So they have got one here that will go into a um, 12 mil, uh, 20 mil, sorry, diameter hole. Um, the problem with this, this one again, it's the guarantee that the wings have opened. Um, they don't always open. And the other thing is with both of these fixings, if the whatever you're attaching, um, if you're fixing this to a narrow cavity, so these will actually go into a narrow, narrow cavity, you've got a bolt fix in there that you will have to cut down to adjust. Because obviously if you're fixing something that's very shallow, the bolt will be going into the breeze block. So they've not actually made the screw bolt to hold only a two mil bracket and only travel a small distance past. They've actually supplied a longer bolt that you would literally have to axaw down in all their fixings. Um, and the beauty about um, bull fix fixings is that once these have opened, not only do we supply um, uh, screws with these, um, obviously bespoke shorter screw for the uh, seven mil cavity, but these will actually take a standard number 10 screw or five mil diameter screw, meaning that most, most joiners, builders, We'll have a selection of different size screws. Say they want to attach something that's a lot larger, maybe attaching some timber to here. So obviously it'd be your timber width plus the plasterboard plus this cavity that you'd be allowed to travel. Um, so it makes these very, very flexible. So looking at sort of fixings that you'd want to be purchasing, and obviously I am biased because I designed the product. Bull fix will work on seven mil cavity, We'll work on battened 20 mil cavity onto breeze block. We'll work on metal stud cavity, double, double skinned, and we'll work on double skinned um, timber stud walls. So what you can see quite clearly is that when we come to actually drill a hole in here, once we've found a, a, a clear spot where there's no cables on or wires using our detector, we are going to be guaranteed that we are going to be able to get a fix in there using bull fix. So imagine you're out on a job or you've just purchased a new house and you're overwhelmed with the massive array of sort of fixings that's available on the marketplace. Which one do you buy? Well, it's simple. It's bull fix. With bull fix, you will absolutely guarantee you will get, especially with a universal one, you will get a fix in in all four types of wall and these will support an incredible amount of weight. Um, there's quite a lot of fixings of this sort of nature where you actually squeeze and feed that through 13 mil hole and then the screw pulls this back in to lock this in place. 
This is a new T-bolt from Jordan Dakin, who was the original inventor of the grip it. This is the Elter Skelter, pigtails, known to many. And this just screws straight into a plasterboard. Um, I must admit, I never ever use these. And anybody that's ever tried them will know they absolutely fail. These are for really holding a very, very light picture. I can pull one of these out literally with my little finger. And you've got the expansion bolts or brolly bolts as they're known in, in, in the marketplace. So basically what happens is um, drill a hole, usually uh, 12 to 13 mil. And this concertine is in. And you finish up with this sort of effect behind the plasterboard. Um, not, not a bad fixing. Um, this is another sort of variety of the uh, collapsible fixing. So you, you basically squeeze this, feed that through the hole, and then it pulls back and locks in place. Then we go to G Fix, who claim to be the one of the world's strongest fixings, but actually they're not. This is a very, very oversized, um, you look at it as a comparison, uh, sort of ridiculous fixing. Um, <laughs> let's make it bigger to make it better. It doesn't always uh, work. Um, it's very, very expensive and it's very, very difficult um, to get in round tight spaces. Um, and then obviously I'm going to talk about bolt fix. So the bolt fix extra, this is a long finger version. This can crawl into sort of 19, 20 mil cavities. And then we've got the short um, universal ball fix fixing. Um, this is this is fantastic. Now this fixing will actually outperform most of these other fixings uh, on cantilever loading. And um, it will actually go into all the different types of cavity wall. With G fix, we've got to actually feed this, drill a hole, and actually feed this fix in. And if I, just as I'm feeding that through, bend that as far as it'll go, it will only just go into the um, 60 mil cavity there. So you can see that if we then bring that same fix in with a 19 mil cavity, there is no way that you're going to be able to feed, feed that through that wall. And not only are they expensive, but that's just, it's just not going to work. So yeah, G-Fix may be all right for just standard uh, metal stud walls or wooden stud walls, but very, very expensive to take quite a long time to fix. Um, so they're not really on top of my list for fixing. I'm going to toddle bolts. And although that's a larger hole, I wanted to show you something from top. And as you can see, for that to work, that's got to travel a long way before that flips open. Um, so I'm just going to now demonstrate. This is on a 19 mil cavity. So we're just going to feed that through as you'll see what happens ah see even if I screw that down as far as it will go we can just push that a little bit further that fixing will not fix into that cavity so these are only suitable where there's a cavity greater than about 30 mil and if we look on dot and dab obviously absolutely impossible so again, another one redundant. So as you can see on the stud wall, there's plenty of pass there for it to pull back on. But let's just try on the 60 mil cavity. Yeah, it's managed to lock in, so it worked work there as well. As you can see, Timco uh, zip toddle, and try and fix this into a 19 mil cavity, you've got absolutely no chance. And the same goes for the 7 mil cavity. So again, there's another fixing that sort of failed on the 
for type to wall test. Um, I'm going to come to these, the uh, Elter Skelter or Pigtails as they're known. There's a variety of these, they do these sort of in plastic and they do some that split open. Obviously, as you can see, they're not going to fit in a 7mm cavity. They would fit into a 19mm cavity on obviously a metal studded wall and a timber studded wall. Um, problem with these is you can literally pull these out with your little finger. Move on to toddle bolts. And obviously for that to draw the end bit in, as you can see, that will work in a studded wall, it will work in a metal studded wall. And then we come to one way 19mm cavity. And we're probably pushing it a little bit, but as you can see, we'll push that through and it stops literally about 3mm short. So that would not work, that would fail. And then obviously, again, you've got a 7mm cavity, that fixing will not go in. Then come on to these, where you squeeze these in and then they open out. Again, these will work on a studded wall, work on a metal studded wall. And you get to sort of the 19mm sort of cavity. Although we drilled a larger hole here, they would just, just work. Coming on to the 7mm cavity wall, you're going to first line the collar in. This is exactly the same collar as used by the long finger version, which is the extra. We're now going to try the universal. And incredibly, we'll open that. Tap. And as you can see, that fixing will actually creep behind there. And this, these are incredibly strong. And this will take a bespoke screw that allow a bracket of two mil. As you can see, which is incredibly um, clever and smart fixing. This fixing can be used on 7mm cavity, it can be used on 90mm cavity, metal studded walls and timber studded walls. So you've got a universal fixing there that can be used in all applications that's extremely strong and it's so strong that with just one of those fixings I managed to support my entire weight as a sheer load on that particular fixing. This 100 mil backed 12 and a half mil plasterboard. Bump fix universal. Tap the colour in. Tap the fixing in. Place a picture up on here. There we go. Twelve and a half mil backed with um, twenty five mil polystyrene. Collar fixing full fix universal.
get choke fixing. The only plasterboard fixing that works in all situations. Bull fix universal plasterboard fixings. Simply the best.